Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> everybody what's going on and welcome to gnr central and i apologize i didn't get this up sooner but you guys can always go to gnrcentral.com in fact i think we were the first official news site to break the story i wouldn't call the forums official news sites but um yeah this kind of came out of left field the reason it wasn't posted um yesterday is because i was in my in-laws so i didn't have a chance to to film any videos but i did post it on gnrcentral.com and this is a pretty mind-blowing story. Um, the only reason we knew about this is because uh, I guess a Guns N' Roses fan was watching cartoons and was kind of shocked by what he saw. So Axl Rose basically appeared on a new episode of Looney Tunes on Christmas Day, and he shared his first song in 10 years. But what's really strange about this whole thing is that there really wasn't any kind of announcement in the run-up to Axel appearing on Looney Tunes. It just sort of happened, and then people caught wind of it, and then the clips started going on YouTube. So, backing up a bit, um, the episode which aired on Christmas Day featured a cartoon version of Axel asking Bugs Bunny and company how to get to the Civic Center, where he was due to perform with his band Steel Underpants. But the animated friends tell him there's a giant asteroid headed towards Earth, and after Rose informs the group his speakers can shake mountains to the ground, Bugs asks, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And Rose replies that I should go back to wearing a mesh jersey and kilt again. So that was a good little uh, joke, especially inside joke for those Guns N' Roses fans who remember those early 90s days. Bugs suggests that Axel uh, play loud enough to blow up the asteroid with the Looney Tunes gang as his backing band. The group then proceeds to play a song called Rock the Rock in an attempt to save the Earth. Now it's unclear whether Axel sang on the track or voiced the cartoon version of himself. Fans have argued the sound, that the song sounds more like ACDC than Guns N' Roses, which I agree. If you guys go on YouTube, you can search a Rock the Rock, and it sounds much more like ACDC. It does sound like Axel singing, um, but people haven't confirmed that 100%. The guy voicing, uh, that does sound like Axel's voice when it comes to just dialogue parts, and it wouldn't be completely out of the blue for him to appear in a TV show. Um, you guys should also remember that frequently on the Not In This Lifetime tour, uh, at least to the two shows that I went to, they opened up with the Looney Tunes theme song. So it's not doesn't seem like out of the blue that Axel would you know show up on the TV show. I just find it odd that there was no announcement leading up to his appearance. It just kind of happened, and you know they let the fans kind of discover it. Now a lot of people are wondering whether this song that Axel that Axel supposedly sang on is a new song that may be showing up on a new album or something. I don't think that's the case at all. If you listen to the song. It sounds like something the writers of the show came up with, and that was it, and they basically told Axel to sing it. I think it would be kind of odd for Axel to debut a new song on a TV show. But then again, I could be completely wrong. Man, who would have thought in 2008 Axel would have premiered a brand new Guns N' Roses song, Shackler's Revenge, on Rock Band 2? If you told me back in 1993 that Axel's next original song would be debuted, or I guess, I, oh my God, not counting that song, uh, hit one of his next, you know, songs coming from uh, Chinese Democracy would be debuted on a video game 15 years later, I totally wouldn't have believed it. But it ended up happening. So the entire clip was on YouTube of Axel talking to Bugs Bunny, but then it got pulled off of YouTube because of all the copyright stuff. But at the time of this recording, you can go listen to the song. So if you guys want to go check out the song, I've linked to it down below. Go listen to it. It's um it's very ACDC sounding. There's been a lot of rumors going around with ACDC in the studio uh, in Vancouver that perhaps Brian Johnson will be recording uh, vocals for the new album, but it will in fact be Axel touring with the band, which I could totally see. It's one thing for Brian Johnson to go into a studio and basically uh, record in a controlled environment. It's a whole other thing for him to go do a complete, you know, do a full tour with the band worldwide without compromising his hearing. But as we get more information on this, guys, and as more information comes out about the Looney Tunes episode, we will keep you guys up to date. Let's go on to some of our other news. So a new interview that Brando from Appetite for Distortion did uh, with uh, Scott Weiland's solo band guitarist Doug Green has revealed a story about how Scott Weiland felt when he was first recording with Slash and Duff uh, when he joined Velvet Revolver. And he said, Doug said that I think he just wanted to be sold su super ultra ripped because he was going to be replacing Axl Rose. So he said just one year he got obsessed with working out. He was so obsessed he would work out in the morning 
And then we go out to lunch and he's, he'd eat a piece of bread and he'd be like, I've got to go back to the gym. I swear to God, I saw him do it several times. It was around the time that Velvet Revolver was forming and I think he just wanted to be super ultra ripped because he was going to be replacing Axl Rose. He was very nervous about that. He was a huge fan and I'll tell you a story that no one knows the story. I was there in the living room the day that the project sent over the CD. Like a messenger had sent over a CD of song ideas from Duff and Slash to get Scott interested in being the singer. This is nine months before the first song. He tells me what it is and I said, well, are you going to do it? He goes, I can't sing with Slash and Duff. I can't take over Axl Rose's place. I just can't do it. He didn't like the celebrity that much. He could have hung out with tons of famous people and he never did. It was a little intimidating to him. The nine months later, they offered him a super sweet deal on the soundtrack. They threw a huge chunk of change at them to do that cover and that basically started it. Scott was very friendly and liked to collaborate. And so once they did one song, that was it. There was a band, but initially he was intimidated and didn't want anything to do with it. He wasn't very calculating like, oh, we're going to milk this one. He just felt comfortable doing the first song. Uh, turning now to some Christmas photos. So if you guys have been following uh, Megan on social media, she posted some Christmas photos of Slash and her spending some time together. And then Slash also revealed one of the gifts he got, which was a talking uh, Chucky doll, which I can imagine would be frightening. I remember my sister used to have one of those dolls. It wasn't a talking one, but it was just like one of the ones that looked similar to it. And I always hated going in her bedroom to get stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me, him being a huge horror fan. And I think he's got something like three horror movies in the works right now. Now, I don't know if you guys ever saw There's Nothing Left to Fear. Um, it was pretty poorly reviewed, but I never had a chance to see it myself. So let me know if you guys have seen the movie and what your thoughts were on it. Turning now to some uh, Buckethead news. So the former Guns N' Roses guitarist has announced an upcoming spring tour, which will begin on March 1st, 2019, and run through the middle of April. So he's going to be playing a bunch of dates across the U.S., if you guys want to see the full list of tour dates, I've put the link down below. If you guys also remember, my co-host Jeff on our weekly podcast went and saw Buckethead when he came through his town uh, earlier in the year and did a whole video diary about it. So you guys can just Google um, Buckethead, uh, probably Cincinnati, Ohio, you know, concert diary, and you can see Jeff's uh, video diary he did for the Buckethead show. Now, you guys have maybe been seeing the year-end charts. Um, one of the big numbers that came out this year is that Bohemian Rhapsody was the most streamed song of 2018, most likely due to the popularity of the movie being the highest grossing uh, musical biopic that's come out in history. One thing that's kind of missed in a lot of those stats is that Guns N' Roses have two of the top five songs streamed this year from the 20th century. So Bohemian Rhapsody, of course, was number one. Smells Like Teen Spirit was number two by Nirvana. Sweet Child of Mine was number three by GNR, as well as number four was GNR with November Rain. Um, and then five was Take On Me by Aha. Uh -huh. Now, unfortunately, there's no numbers that I was able to find for exactly how stream these songs were, but uh, I'm sure maybe in the coming weeks we'll get some better numbers. I'd love to know how well streamed some of the other Guns N' Roses songs are. Like if you did the top 10 with... Would Welcome to the Jungle be there? Would Paradise City be there? Would Patience be there? I'm guessing those songs are much further down the list just because they're not as popular. Now, if you guys watch our weekly podcast, then you know one of my other favorite bands besides Guns N' Roses is Steel Panther. Now, this was a story that happened at the beginning of the month, and I was kind of shocked when I first read it. I was like, I don't know if it was a joke or not, just given Steel Panther's persona, but their bass has dropped out of their upcoming tour due to basically um, his, uh, he's going to be, he entered sex rehab. So uh, basically, um, Lexi Fox, the bassist in the hair metal revivalist Steel Panther, dropped out of the band's upcoming U.S. tour after being admitted to sex rehab. So an official statement uh, from the band reads, California rock and party legends Steel Panther have survived a career of living a decadent lifestyle surrounded by loud music, fast cars, and beautiful women. They said that lifestyle of debauchery and pro uh, proclivity Towards random sexual encounters has finally caught up with the band's bassist, Lexi Fox, has voluntarily checked himself into an undisclosed sex rehab. So drummer Stick Sedinius is added, We love Lexi and his mother. We support his decision to end her rehab. We can't wait for him to get back on the road after he learns how to have better sex. The, and I don't know if that statement was a joke either. So the band's doorman, Spider, a friend of over 30 years, has been recruited as a stand-in for the bassist, a stand-in for the bassist for their ongoing tour dates. So Steel Panther basically continued their tour in Cleveland on December 4th and will play 
through um, through the tenth in Cincinnati. So the summer band came under fire for sexism after teaming up with the audio company TC Electronic to create the quote pussy melter preset guitar pedal effect. The effect was discontinued by TC after an online backlash. However, the band later revealed they would release the pedal themselves. And earlier this year, the band told Enemy they would have played Donald Trump's inauguration. They said, F yeah, I'll do anything as long as the money's right. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the new Axel song and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. And make sure you subscribe for all things related to Guns N' Roses. And go check out GNRCentral.com for the latest Guns N' Roses news.